What do you guys think about sigma 1 and sigma 2? Are they equal, greater, uh, one is greater than the other, smaller? Are they dependent or independent? So, uh, who says they are uh, dep dependent? Independent, right? Yeah, so both they are independent. And here they have equal variance because, you know, what whatever direction you're, you're following is just the same uh, uh, rate of change. So you have like eccentric circles, which means your, your variables, this is the, um, uh, the distribution of your data that you're plotted right here, okay? So now we're gonna look at more exciting cases. So I would like you to look at those before I go and explain. So what do we have? First, we have two features, X1 and X2. Uh, we have a bunch of samples. We plotted the distribution. Remember, we fitted the PX into the bunch of histograms, right? We got it our PDF. Then we define it using a, like a, it's a normal distribution with a covariance matrix, a sigma with a mu or mean vector. Mu here has two values, right? It's a two by two matrix. And we end up with these three different scenarios. So we have different data distributions. So what does that tell us about the data? Right, the first case, now let's look at them one by one. So this one, you can see that, let's look at this. Around zero, right? The data is centered at zero. That's your mean, right? Zero mean centered data. Now, what is the variance of each feature? As these are, you know, it's equal to one, so one, both are have equally the same variance, which means if you go up along uh, the change along one direction is also the same as the change uh, rate along the other direction. Okay, so you can look at it this way. So they're always identical. Okay, now let's look at the other case here. What's the difference? We have shifted the mean. So you can see the mean is very important. So here we shifted, the, the data is shifted by one, okay, the whole distribution, okay, because it is centered at what? It's centered at one. So this is your mu. Right, now let's look at this case. So you have a feature x1. So what is the difference? So the covariance is equal to zero. So you can see the distribution is still vertical, right? So they're independent, but now they've turned from circles to ellipsoid. So there, the data is stretched out along one direction, right? So the variance of the x1 is equal to one, and the variance of x2 is equal to four. What does this mean, having a higher variance? What does it mean intuitively? Yes, good. It means they're further away, they're more spread out, right? So you can see the points here are more spread out. They're like scattered away, more spread out. These ones are like quite closer, right? So this, uh, how do I say, the scatteredness or, or um, uh, the spread of the data uh, along the x2 direction is higher than uh, along the x1 direction, okay? Now, if we look at the other case, we just rotated it, right? And here, you can see, like, sigma, actually, it's a very nice matrix, but it can ha it has two effects, this covariance matrix. It has the effect of rotation and also uh, scaling, okay? So you can rotate the data distribution and scale it. And if you find the right sigma, if you have, for example, let's say... Um, a first distribution like this of your training samples and the other one like that. What you can do, you can just somehow rotate this and, uh, well, let's say, maybe this is not good, like something like this, okay? So you can rotate it and also scale it down, make it smaller, so you align both distributions. This can be a solution to the problem of data shift or uh, uh, the population drift, okay? Because by finding the right sigma, you can transform your data. This is why covariance is the heart of, not everything, but many, many important things when it comes to machine learning, okay? So now let's look at 
these cases right here. What do you guys see? Okay, so let's start with the first one. Okay, so the first case. So the variance of both variables is equal, so they're equal to one, but the covariance of feature one with feature two, they're, well, in this case, they're equal, but they're different from zero. So it means they are dependent, right? And they are positively dependent. Why they are positively dependent? Because, as you can see here, as we go on, uh, as the X1 increases, okay, the other one also has half increase. So that's why we have 0.5. So you go by one, you increase by, you take step one uh, along the x1 feature, you take 0.5 along the x2 feature. So that's the ratio, okay? Now, we look at this one. So the ratio has changed, so it's 0.9. And you can go like this. And it should be, you know, times 0.9, right? So that's the, the relationship between these two. Now, the same here, but we have a scaling, right? So it has scaled up. So if you look at this one, the variance, the variance of the second variable is higher, which means it's more spread out along the uh, x2 direction. So you have exactly the same, but you can see how the distribution completely changes when you're scaling, right? But the direction, the rate of change, the covariance is exactly the same between both variables. Now, uh, we have the other case where First, like the first row is like positive, now it's negative, so negative covariance, and it's quite similar. So you can see here, when we have an increase uh, by 1, we have a decrease by 0.5. That's negatively uh, correlated or a negative covariance. So 